Here in the UK, two men are fighting it out to become the country's next prime minister. One of them will be the next UK prime minister. It's proving anything but easy for the front runner. Listen to this. Does a person's private life... Don't boo! No, no, no! Don't boo the great man! When, when he answers this question, I will move on. Does, does a person's private life have any bearing on their ability to discharge the office of Prime Minister? Well, uh, no, I, I, I look, I, I've, I've tried to give my answer pretty exhaustively. I think what people want to know is whether I have the determination and the courage to deliver on the... Uh, commitments that I'm making. Just to be clear, you're not going to make any comment at all on what happened last night? I think that's pretty, that's pretty obvious from the foregoing. Uh, uh, Ian, but I... Boris Johnson repeatedly ducking questions about an incident in which the police was called to the London home he shares with his girlfriend after the neighbours there said they heard screaming and banging. Meanwhile, his opponent, Jeremy Hunt, has a message for Mr Johnson. Don't be a coward. That's after he pulled out of a televised debate with Hunt. Let's get uh, details on this now. Bianca Nobilo is here. So the police came out on Thursday, early Friday morning. Mm -hmm. Neighbors heard some screaming, some banging. They said mm -hmm. they were concerned for the safety of the people inside. Correct. And it turned out to be Boris Johnson and his girlfriend. He's not addressing it, though. He, he isn't. So what we know is that Scotland Yard have said they were called to a disturbance at 24 minutes past midnight, the early hours of Friday morning, so just hours after Boris Johnson was confirmed as being in the final two. Mm -hmm. Now, the neighbours said that they were concerned for the welfare of the female involved, but when the police arrived, they said that there was no cause for concern or for further investigation. It then transpired over the weekend in the British press of being either... Um, more and more focus on Boris Johnson's character and mm -hmm. the fact that he has had a tumultuous personal life and we needed an investigation and answers as to what exactly happened that night. That was one school of thought. The other being that this is a private matter and some doubt being cast over the people who actually not only reported this to the police, which is understandable if you're concerned for the welfare of your neighbour, but then recorded what mm -hmm. they heard and then sent it to The Guardian, which is a left-leaning newspaper. Sure, but uh, I guess uh, if you look at the polls now, mm -hmm. among Conservative Party members, this has mm -hmm. had an impact, and people mm -hmm. are interested in what yeah. Boris Johnson does in his private life, mm -hmm. because those who are uh, of the opinion that this mm -hmm. matters believe this uh, says something about his character. And justifiably so, mm -hmm. even one of the top Conservative donors, John Griffiths, he's the second biggest donor to the Conservative Party, has come out today saying that he now has concerns about the morality of Boris Johnson and also not only does he feel people are owed an explanation, but that he has to handle this well. And that really strikes at the heart of not only the questions over Boris Johnson's character, which some people have, but mm -hmm. also his competence. It reminds me of when Amber Rudd, the former Home Secretary, made a statement back in 2016. She said... Boris is the life of the party, but not the man you want driving you home. Mm -hmm. That sort of criticism sticks with Boris Johnson because that's what people are concerned about, which is why these events transpiring as they did yeah. have added a lot of fuel to the fire of those critics of Johnson that say that he's unfit for office. Boris Johnson, however, and his partner mm -hmm. have not addressed this publicly, but there were photos of them looking happy they, together on the front cover we of, have the a, of the Evening Standard. the Evening Standard, and yes. some people believed... Perhaps this was a bit of a staged event. Yes. Of course, there's no confirmation of this, but certainly the editor of the Evening Standard mm. seemed to suggest uh, that, you know, there you fortuitously have a he, photographer in the bushes. They made a comment, uh, it's not known whether or not the couple were aware of the photographer. They mm. would not confirm or deny. Interestingly, in the UK, uh, what hasn't made front page news mm. is the fact that this video from last year of Steve Bannon, mm -hmm. the far right, ideologue, who was yeah. a chief strategist for Donald Trump, mm -hmm. discussed in a documentary that was being filmed at the time the fact that he was exchanging texts with Boris Johnson mm -hmm. and giving advice on, on a speech, a very important post-resignation mm -hmm. uh, speech he was going to give to the Commons. Why hasn't that gotten any traction here? The Johnson campaign have poured cold water all over that. They've said it's a preposterous, conspiratorial well, thing to say, as they yeah. would. I had then spoke to some of my contacts within the Brexit party who say that they, through intermediaries, have been in contact with Boris Johnson regularly over the mm -hmm. last couple of months. I asked them if they had any knowledge of the situation, as the Boris camp is denying this, and they said that, as far as they're concerned, it is Steve Bannon reaching out to Boris Johnson and not the other way around, even though they understand that they've been in contact.
these are men who have been in discussions mm -hmm. with each other in the past. But for Boris Johnson's part, he's denying that Steve Bannon has been regularly in touch with him and that he's exerting any influence over his policy making or his speeches. And now that Boris Johnson mm -hmm. is facing the membership rather than the Conservative Party, as you heard in that soundbite mm -hmm. that you played, they're generally sympathetic towards him. Sure. He's been one of the favourites for a long time. The key question now is, it's always been that his political charisma has outweighed the drawbacks of his impulsiveness and his ability to be gaff-prone. Yeah. The question oh, yeah. now is, is, is it tipping too far in the other direction? And we shall see soon enough. Thanks very much, Bianca. In fact, I asked a senior uh, government minister about this, with Johnson facing increasing pressure and questions being raised about his character. How concerned are conservatives? I spoke to Alan Duncan, who is a foreign office minister who's worked with both Johnson and Jeremy Hunt, his rival. I started by asking him if Johnson owes voters an explanation about that alleged domestic altercation. No, I think it's none of your business and it's none of mine. And I'm surprised you asked the question. Why, why would you be surprised, though? Doesn't it speak to his character? I'm perfectly happy to discuss his character and his suitability, but I think dwelling on a personal matter is not something that we in the Hunt campaign want to spend any time on, and we're not prepared to be drawn into any kind of conversation about it. If you want to ask about suitability, then I have plenty to say. I think he is unsuitable compared with Jeremy Hunt. Mm -hmm. I've been the deputy to both, and I think that by far the more outstanding of the two is Jeremy Hunt. He's got... Uh, intellectual acumen, uh, he concentrates on detail, mm -hmm. uh, he's a genuine person, whereas I think there is an element in Boris Johnson which is a bit shambolic, a bit slapdash, and I think that I would feel far more comfortable having Jeremy Hunt as Prime Minister of this country I'm, than Boris Johnson. I'm going to get to that in a moment, but the reason I'm asking about this row is because his standing in the polls has fallen sharply uh, after it emerged that this happened and the police were called, which means people do care about it. What do you make of that? Well, they can care about it if they want. Uh, I don't. I did, however, go to the hustings, the sort of auditions on stage in Birmingham on Saturday. And there, actually, you could see a real distinction between the two. Uh, Boris just didn't feel that he looked as though he was interested in being there. He didn't seem to have been prepared. Uh, he didn't really answer any of the questions. He kept on looking at his watch. He just wanted to go. Whereas Jeremy Hunt came in and he just took the place by storm. He answered all the questions. He had accurate answers, which were not just waffle. And I think, as someone who was there, you could feel the whole mood just sort of evaporating for Boris Johnson and rising for Jeremy Hunt. I guess the question is, is Jeremy Hunt the person to lead the Conservative Party if there is a general election? Is he the person, as Prime Minister, that would lead the party to victory? There is a question mark, according to Conservative Party members, over that, and that's why some of them feel like they need to support Boris Johnson. Well, I think there are two points there. The first is that I think that Boris Johnson's electoral appeal has significant, significantly diminished over the last couple of years. I mean, following the referendum, uh, he probably is not popular in London because they were very pro-Remain. Mm -hmm. He's not popular in Scotland because they're very pro-Remain. And whereas he could be a sort of characterful person as mayor of London, there are different qualities to be prime minister. And my second point is that it's not just about the selfish interests of the Conservative Party. Uh, the Prime Minister is the Prime Minister of the whole country. And that is why I think Jeremy Hunt is head and shoulders above Boris. He'd be a unifying figure. I think he'd appeal to young people across the generations, across to all parts of the United Kingdom. Whereas I think increasingly Boris Johnson is becoming and has become a divisive figure. Right, so if you want unity, mm -hmm. which then will convert into electoral appeal, I'm... I'm certain it should be Jeremy Hunt. And Jeremy Hunt is still behind, though, in the polls. But let me ask you about a figure very well known to Americans and many of our viewers on CNN, and that is Steve Bannon. And a video that emerged from last year in which he details a text back and forth between him and Boris Johnson before a speech he gave to the Commons. He gave a speech on national TV. They had a debate that night, and it was magnificent. And all I was telling him all weekend is just to incorporate those themes, the same themes. Basically, he was saying that uh, June 23rd was Independence Day for, for Great Britain. Their Independence Day would be like our July 4th. Is uh, that the date of? That's the day of the vote, yeah.
Oh, is this something that concerns you as a as a foreign office minister, as a minister in this uh, in the UK government? I think one of the growing threats in the world is the rise of the far right, particularly in Europe. And uh, if indeed, as we've heard, Steve Bannon in the past thinks that that is a good phenomenon, I most certainly do not. So if there were any continuous and detailed contacts uh, between Boris Johnson and Steve Bannon, I would find that a matter of deep concern, and I think it would require a very detailed explanation from the Johnson camp. But I have seen no obvious, obvious proof of that, but I am aware of the press speculation. Well, that was uh, Alan Duncan, clearly not a fan of Boris Johnson in this race, supporting his rival.